Then you ought to make yes, enough noise yes, for him yes, to hear you. Yes. Down here. Come on. Good morning to everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's a wonderful, just, yes, holy, and righteous yes, God. Yes, glory, glory. The scripture says it is in him that we live, we move, we exist. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you, we can't do anything without God. Nothing. Nothing. Try it. You'll find out that you need him. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. I told you guys a story a long time ago. I was working as a manager at Burger King, and the young guy told me, he said he didn't believe in God. Hmm. And I said, Well, who wake you up in the morning? He said, My alarm clock or my mom. <laughs> I said, Wow. Hmm. You know, but when you don't know, you don't. That's know. right. I'm just, that's I'm, right. I'm that's just right. add that in there for that's him. Right. That's right. That's right. So about five minutes later or so, uh, uh, a some grease popped on his hand, and he said, "Oh Lord!" <laughs> and so me being me, all right, I walked all back right. there and said, "Well, who are you calling on?" Yeah, come on now. Yeah. Come on, come on, yeah. come on. If you're calling on Lord, who are you oh, calling okay. on? All right, all right. He got a little up. He got a little upset. But I said, Look, if you don't know Lord, I can help you get to know him. Say it. Say it, Johnson. See, because sometimes we think that we know it all, or we think that we can do it by ourselves, and we think that we got it going on, but God is the only source of our life. That's it. That's it. The scripture it is him, him that is inside of us. Yes. And he had made us, we not we ourselves. My yeah. God. Yes. And we live on the scripture here. Yes. I'm going to give you this one here. I know. Come on, face recognition. There you go. Romans chapter 12. Coming out of the amplified version of this is this. I was having a little talk with the Lord this morning. He told me something that we have to learn how to love one another, brothers and sisters in Christ. That's right. Someone spoke that to me last night. You know, love is one of the one of the greatest things of the world. And sometimes we get hurt in life and we don't want to give it or sometimes we don't even want to receive it. My God. Verse 9 said, love to be sincere and active and real without God or or, or hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Hate what is evil. Detest what is ungodliness. Do not tolerate wickedness. All right. Hold on tightly to what is good. Be devoted to one another. 
with authentic brotherly affection mm -hmm. as members of one family. Yeah. Give preference to one another and honor them. Never lagging behind in diligence, a glow in spirit. Authentic, authentically serving the Lord. Consistently rejoicing in hope because of the confidence in Christ. Steadfast, patient, discreet, devoted in prayer. Constantly seeking the wisdom and guidance of the strength yes, God. and contribution yes, God. to the needs of God's people. Yes. Pursuing and practicing hospitality. Yes, God. In other words, love God and allow him to let you love somebody else. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, I know we all have been hurt. And even sometimes Lamar Church hurt. Yeah. But if you don't get rid of that kind of stuff, you won't see God. Hatred makes you frown. You don't have a smile on your face. Disliking what somebody done to you over, over a long period of time make your heart hurt. The scripture said that we got to show each other the brotherly love and affection. Because over 2,000 years ago, somebody loved us enough. That's right. That's right. That's right. In spite of what we were doing. Yes, sir. Deacon Nelson. In spite of who we are, yeah. in spite of where we were going, yeah. to die for us. Yeah. Just imagine in your mind, in your mind eyesight, Elder Peter said, mm -mm, they're not worthy. My God. My God. <laughs> and I'm going to use what you often say pause and calmly think on that. Say, Lord. Just imagine. Yes, sir. And he didn't love you enough, Deacon Dillon. My God. To walk down that trail. To allow them to beat him. See, love had a lot to do with all of that. Yes, sir. Oh, I know the critics will say, oh. He went to the garden and he prayed, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass over me. I know he, right in that moment, Sherry, you wanted to say, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My God. In that moment, he wanted to say, man, he's, he, mm, father, my, these, my, my, father, my, my, these, my, my. He, father. My God. But he kept on going. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I want to impact you with that kind of love. The kind of love that you forgive somebody that wronged you. Yeah. Now hear me, hear me, church. Yes, Lord. Truly forgive somebody that wronged you. I don't care if you were nine years old when it happened. The Lord touched my heart. I don't care how long it's been that somebody that wronged you. In order to see God with a clear conscience and a clear heart, you got to learn to forgive. Yes, sir. yes, 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 sir. I want to see God without any restraints, without anything to go along. I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes, yes. Enter in into this rest. Glory. I don't want to get there after preaching 40 years, 50 years, and hear him say, you can't depart from me. My Lord. What we living for? We living to live again. Amen. Say it. Say it. Yeah. We serving to love others. So I admonish you today. Love your brother and your sister. Even when they don't look like you. They don't smell like you. They don't dress like you. And they may not act like you. All right. You got to learn to love them.
So I welcome you here today to the real. And I love God and I welcome you here that you allow yourself to get into his worship. Let him be the part of your life that you really enjoy. Yes. Get that joy in coming back to worship. Get that joy in there. I'm getting in my car and I'm on my way to, to the house of God. I'm going to see my brothers and sisters in Christ. Get that joy that when you come back to the house of God, you know that something's going to happen today. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. So I welcome you to praise him today. I welcome you there on YouTube to get you tuned in that you be blessed. But I also got to tell you something. We say it every week, but I want you to understand this is closer to your heart than you ever think. That every time that you declare this here, it blesses you. Because it lets you know who you are and who you belong to. Are you ready to declare this morning? Yeah. I didn't hear the whole church. Are you ready to declare? Yeah. Well, let's go. I am the blessed of God, the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. Above only and not believe. I believe only what the word says about me. The word is my sword and God's plan for my life. I am saved. I am sanctified. I am Holy Ghost still. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And real life, abundant life, the God kind of life belongs to me. If you believe that, put the hands together. And give me praise this morning. Because it does belong to you. And we get ready to bring our pastor up. And he's getting ready to have a word today. And I think that the word today is going to be touching for your soul. I said a few weeks ago that everything is going down except God's word. I had a nephew just recently came home from, from prison. We was on our family line the other night, Sherry, and he was talking to me. He said, Help. He said, he said, Uncle, I want to preach the gospel. And then the next week, he got challenged with life. I don't know what to do. I don't want to turn back to myself. I want to be mean or mad, mad anymore. I want to do what God told me to do. And I had one simple answer for him. And Pastor, get ready to come. Pastor, get ready to come. I had one simple answer for him. Do y'all know what it was? I heard seek the Lord. I heard some other stuff. But I said, the more that you put the word in front of you, the stronger you will be. See, when you when your when that E is on your gas tank, you know that you got to make it to the Shell, the Amoco. Y'all got to make it somewhere because you got to get some petrol to give you. To get, to get to the next place. So as Christians, we got to do the same thing. We have to fuel ourselves with the word of God. And the more we put it on the inside of us, the more power we'll have to fight off the things of the devil. Hear me. Read your word. Listen to a video. Listen to real life videos every after you go home. Every Monday. Hear it over again. Amen. Every time you hear the word, Angie, you get stronger. Yes, you and so when the dots come at you, when the dots come at you, they'll be the bump right on off. You know, they hit you, but they'll, you know, they'll, they'll bump right on off because you have something on the inside to protect you, protect you. So the word is getting ready to come. Our pastors get ready to come up here, and I've done talked to your ears enough. But there's going to be a word that's going to touch your heart. And believe me here, ma'am, sir, open up your spirit. Allow the Lord to come in. And you suck with him today. Put your hands together for our pastor to come before our friend this time. Amen. Hello, everybody. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being with us here at Real Life Christian Fellowship Church at uh, 841 Crossgate Road in the beautiful city of Fort Wentworth, Georgia. 
Y'all try it with me. Say, beautiful city. You sound mighty good out there. Amen. For those of you who are with us virtually, God bless you. And thank you for being with us this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to you, Lord, for all that you are and all that you do. You are amazing. It's mind blowing how good you are and how good you are at being as good as you are. I mean, it's just really mind blowing because every day we wake up to these brand new mercies. Every day we see your grace and your love and your kindness. And I mean, it's just really mind blowing. And, and God, as we think about how good you are to us and who you are and who we are and, and what we've done and where we've been and the mistakes we've made and even the things we've done on purpose and the things that we neglected to do that we knew we should have done. And yet still you extend your love toward us. And so it just overwhelms us, God, because on earth, it doesn't work like that. When, when we don't do what's expected of us by others around us who say they love us, Lord, many times they tend to pull back on that love and they tend to draw away from us. But God, you continue to pursue us, God, in your word. It says, though your, it says, come, let us reason together, Lord. It should have been us coming to you but you came to us God so that we could be saved and redeemed and filled with your spirit God because you always want what's best for us and we're just grateful God we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you together corporately as believers Lord God and to receive your word we ask you to speak to us share your heart with us minister to us as only you can in Jesus name we pray we pray God that always souls will be saved and lives will be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus, let every believer say amen. 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 And amen. amen. Come on, everybody, and let's give God some glory today. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Wave at your neighbor and tell him, hello, good morning. How are you? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I do want to take care of a few things before I sit down. Thank you, Portia, so much. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Elder Johnson. Thank you, everybody, because all of y'all were a part of the worship team today. And I'm just grateful to all of you for you being here. I want to thank God um, and thank everybody who came out on yesterday to help us with the homegoing service um, of uh, or Nana. I'm just going to call her Nana. Amen. Uh, Chris's grandmother on yesterday. Thank you for those of you who came to support Chris. And thank you for those of you who came out and served um, because the family was really genuinely blessed by the hospitality of this amazing church. And I also want to ask everyone to please uh, keep Brother Jake Rock and Carolyn Rock and their family in prayer. They had a death in their family on yesterday, a day before yesterday, excuse me. And so we want to keep them in our prayers as well. Remember what we taught on Bible study on Wednesday night, that we never know what the people we see are actually going through and having to endure in order to even get through the day. For some people, getting through the day is not an easy thing. Amen, y'all. And so we must remember to pray for one another. It's, it's easy for someone to look good on the outside and be struggling on the inside. So let's make sure that in our time of prayer that we're lifting one another up. In fact, uh, you notice that that seat is vacant. Pastor Leslie is at home. Um, she Her shoulders bother her just a little bit. Um, and so we're just praying for her recovery as well. Say amen. Amen. So I had to ride all the way to church. I told on the way here, I said, today is the first Sunday of family February and I don't have my family. Amen. But my mom is in the back. Hey, mom. And all of you guys are my family today. I, amen. I, I'm recruiting y'all to be my people. Amen. So it is family February. Um, our focus for February is going to be on the family Everything that we preach and teach may not be about the family, but I am asking that all of you ensure that you do things to build the spiritual foundation of your family, to make sure that you guys are praying together, reading the word together, watching Bible study together, to ensure that you're growing together as a family. There is a very old saying, uh, the family that prays together 
So y'all know that already. So that's something that we should be doing because that unity, even in our household, is a beautiful thing. And so um, today's topic is coming to the screen. Uh, the screen in the back doesn't work anymore. So I'm going to look to the screen right here so I can see it with you guys. It is a call to commitment. A call to commitment. That's what we're going to talk about today. There are a lot of things that um, a lot of ways I could have approached today's message. But there's a call to commitment um, to those who follow God. And in Joshua chapter 24, um, we find a very, very popular scripture, one that is read and quoted quite often. It says in verse 14, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And then Joshua says in verse 15, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. So let's take a quick look at something. This is taking place at the end of the life and leadership of Joshua. Everyone know who Joshua is? I hope Joshua took the place of Moses after Moses died as the one that would lead the children of Israel into the promise. Joshua takes a moment at the end of his life and his leadership to challenge the leaders of Israel to an undivided <laughs> devotion to God. The key word is undivided. Everybody say with me, undivided. undivided. He was challenging them to an undivided relationship or devotion to God, meaning that their relationship with God, their devotion to God was not to be split. That they were not to have devotion to God and to some other God or to God and to themselves, but they were supposed to have a full on love affair with God. The people gathered around him are actually, Lasana, the most influential people in their society. According to Joshua 24 and 1, coming to your screen right now, it says Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem. And call for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. I want you to pay very close attention to who's invited to the meeting. He calls for the heads, the judges, the officers. Those are the people of influence in the society of Israel at that time. What Joshua does next is remind them of everything good that has happened in their lives as a result of the goodness of God. Before he challenges them to have an undivided devotion to God, he takes them on a trip and he retraces their history to show that God has been divinely involved in every step of Israel's development. I'd like to uh, submit to you today that God has been divinely involved in every step of you becoming who you are today. In the verses we're going to read, Joshua lays out a very important message for them and us. Here's the message. Remember where you came from. Remember how you got here. That'll preach all by itself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Say to yourself, remember where you came from. Remember how you got here. Say it again. Remember where you came from. Remember how you got here. This is a beautiful picture of contrast against where Israel found themselves in the moment and where their history originated. They were not the people that they are today with the possessions that they have today. But God has been divinely bringing them from where they are to the point where they are today. And so it is very important in order for us to have a proper relationship with God to remember where we came from and remember how we got here. 
Now, this moment is important. Because being blessed by God can be just as big a challenge to our devotion as being battered by life's challenges. I'm going to say it again. This moment is important because being blessed by God can be just as much a challenge to our devotion to God as being battered by the challenges of life. That's why one time some years ago, Bishop Jakes preached a message. Can you stand to be blessed? Can you handle the blessing on your life without it going to your head and you forgetting how it is that you became the blessed person that you are? I want to ask you today, can you stand to be blessed? Some of us have prayed for the blessing of God and it has not been released yet, probably because God knew that we could not handle what it was we were asking for. That's why James said that there are some of us who don't have it because we didn't ask for it. And there's some of us who don't have it because we have asked amiss that we might use the blessing on ourselves. You know, you know, Joshua is going to take a moment to walk them down memory lane. And I like the way God does that with us. How God reminds us of who we used to be before we met him. God reminds us of where we used to be and how we used to act before we met him. Do I have at least two or three people who remember who you were before you met the Lord? How you used to act, the words you used to use, oh, help us, Jesus, before you met the Lord. You see, sometimes, y'all, we're so blessed that we get the details of how we come to be where we are and possess what we possess a little mixed up. And we give ourselves just a little bit too much credit. You know, sometimes it get hazy how we got here. Oh, yeah. Am I talking to anybody? Somebody asked them how they got to be where they are, and they start talking about how much education they have. Somebody asked them how they made it to where they are, they start talking about the work ethic. They start talking about how much they pray and how much scripture they read and how close they are to the Lord. Instead of just saying, if it had not been the Lord who was on my side, I would have been consumed. If God didn't come in when he came in, I wouldn't have made it. If God wouldn't have made a way, I'd still be in a mess. If God hadn't been provided, I'd be homeless, I'd be hungry, and I'd be wearing the same thing I wore on yesterday. It was God's goodness. Somebody shout God's goodness. But I'm telling you the challenge. Y'all, y'all looking at me and y'all like it's a challenge to be blessed. Sometimes that 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 devotion to God is challenged by the blessing. Because sometimes we become blessed and then forget about God. We get the good job, we get the nice house, we get all the influence we pray for, and our devotion to God goes waning. I've seen it happen so many, many times when people have prayed for the blessing of God. They came to church struggling, crying out to God. And then when God released the blessing in their life, watch this. You hardly saw him anymore. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like they came to church, laid at the altar, got prayed through Ethel. And when they got prayed through Ethel and everything was good, forgot about God. Okay, I'll use another example. Let something difficult happen and watch the level of people's devotion versus when all seas are smooth. So (laughs) I looked at the scripture, Lamar, and I wanted to find some other instances where this happened. 
Because many times what happens in scripture is not a first of. Amen. That there's a history for it. Yeah. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10 through 12, this happened before. Oh, yeah. It says, so it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a large, beautiful cities. I want you to look at this now, which you did not build. Houses full of good things, which you did not fill. Hewn out wells, which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees, which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware, lest you forget the Lord, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now he said, it's not really dangerous till you get full. When you get full, you sit back at the table. And he said, that's when it's dangerous. So he says, then beware. That you forget it was God who did all of this. Because, listen, you didn't build anything. You didn't feel anything. You didn't dig anything. You didn't plan anything. Yet you're living in it. You're drinking from it. And you're eating of it. God said, I did all of it. So there's a man who Jesus told a parable. He said, uh, the man got his uh, bonds full. And he said, all right, it's good now, baby. Bonds are full. We're going to eat, drink, and be merry. And the Lord said, thou fool. Your soul going to be required of you tonight. You think you about to lay back and chill like you did all this, like you a baller and a shot caller? You forgot how you got here. Deut Deuteronomy 8, 11 through 18 goes even deeper. Look at what it says. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. His judgments and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied. Boy, that's the life right there. Yes, sir. Boy, you got a big, beautiful house living in it. Your flocks and your herds are multiplying everything beautiful. And, and, and if that's not enough, your silver and your gold, come on, y'all, are multiplying. Y'all just looking at me, and all you have is multiply. Listen to this. When your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness, in which fiery serpents and scorpions and, and, and in a thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of a flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you, that he might test you to do good in the end. Then you say in your heart, my power, My power and the might of my hand have gained me this well. Verse 18 said that you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. That he may, he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. You see, sometimes the details get a little fuzzy. When the blessing of God is resting on our lives yes, sir. and our level of devotion to God is not where it should be. It's not that I'm saying we don't love God. It's not that I'm saying that we don't serve God. It's not that I'm saying that we don't spend time with God, but it's not at the level that it should be. In many cases, it's not what it was before we had what we had. So Joshua comes to them to shake them up a little bit, to remind them of where they came from. So let's deal with that first. In, in verse 2, Joshua 24, I'm just going to read through it so that you can see it. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel said long ago 
your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the, the, the Euphrates River and worship other gods. He's saying you weren't always the godly people you are. You were always, you weren't always worshipers of God. Y'all used to be a bunch of idol worshipers. I know Abraham is the father of faith, but he wasn't always. Abraham got a little bit of a history. Abraham's folks got some history. Come on, talk to me, church. So y'all looking back at your lineage with all this pride, but you better remember from which you came. Listen to what he said. He said, I love this. He said, but I took your father, Abraham, from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac. And to Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau. And I assigned the hill country of Seir to Esau. But Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. He said, I took him out of what he was in. If it wasn't for me, he'd have still been there. And if I didn't bring him out, you wouldn't be out. So look back over your life and look at where your people came from and thank God for what he did in the lives of the generations before you because it is because of what he did in them that you are able to enjoy what you enjoy today. My grandmother and grandfather would just love to be able to live the way I live today. They sacrificed. They, they did back-breaking work. They did all they could to ensure that the next generation could live the way we live today. And by the way, they taught us how to serve God. Yeah, they taught us how to serve God. Since it's Black History Month, I'm just going to go out there. I wish black people would go back to teaching their children how to serve God. That's how we got here, baby. That's how we got degrees. That's how we got houses. That's how we got cars. That's how we got these nice clothes. Because somebody taught us that we had a friend in Jesus. Do I have a witness here? They taught us that. In my, my grandparents' house, you weren't laying in the bed. Sunday morning. You going to church. Somebody shout glory. glory. Sister Moore, am I lying? That's how we were raised, Portia. Quoting the 23rd song. Before you went to school. Didn't have nothing to do with English. Or mathematics. Didn't have nothing to do with science. But they stood there in their kitchen. Baby, I'm talking to you. You ain't here, but I'm talking to you. The Lord is my shepherd. Because she knew you were going to need that thing. One day you were going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, but you learn to fear no evil. Somebody shout back with me. I wasn't supposed to be acting like this. I was supposed to be teaching today. But I feel an unction from the Holy One. We got to get back to what brought us here. That's how we got here. All, all the rights we have. The marches started at church. And now we're trying to do it without God. We have generations who don't know nothing about God, Sam. Grandmama, mama, grandkids, great grand grandkid don't know a thing about the Lord. That's not our heritage. That's not how we came up. I came up going to Sunday school. That was before church. Jaleel. Church started at 11.30. Sunday school started at 10. Lele, I grew up with going with a little book in my hand. I've been to school all week. Somebody say amen. But Angie, on Sunday, I went to school to learn about Jesus. My Lord and my Savior. I went to learn, I tell you. That's why I know what a parable is. I learned it in Sunday school. I learned the Bible in Sunday school. Somebody say amen. Some of y'all went to BTU. Baptist Training Union. Or y'all ain't going to have church with me today. 
That's church after church. Oh, real life, you don't know how good you got it. You come in at 10 and you're walking out at 11, 15. But back in the day, church was an all-day affair. And half of the night. Don't mess around and it'll be a usher's anniversary. Choir anniversary. Come on, y'all. Pastor's anniversary. Church anniversary. Spring revival. Fall revival. Candlelight service. And Nelson, at my church, they had, listen, they had prayer service and Bible study. And now we're talking about, I don't want to make my kids. I don't want to push my kids. You better be glad somebody pushed you. Be glad somebody made you. Look at who you are and where you are. Somebody shout glory. He said, everything y'all father had, I gave it to him. Every child he had, I gave it to him. He was an old, old man. And his wife was an old, old lady. And they had never had any children. And as old folk, I gave them Isaac. Then I gave Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And then Jacob had 12. They make up the 12 tribes of Israel. And they went to Egypt because that's where Joseph was. You got to look at this thing. So now they're in Egypt. Look at where they came from, y'all. So God says, I sent Moses and Aaron. And I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there. He said, and I brought you out. And when I brought your people out of Israel, you came to the sea and to the, to the in Egypt, they pers- the Egyptians, they pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help. And he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. And he brought the sea over them and covered them, talking about the Egyptians. And you saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Y'all. He said, listen, some of them in the crowd, they were kids. And they were able to see what happened way back when. And he said, some of you saw it with your own eyes. You seen with your own eyes how God brought you out. Oh, God. You seen it with your own eyes. Some of y'all have such a history with God that can't nobody tell you God not good. Let them try, Janae. Let them try to convince you that God's not good. You seen too much. Somebody shout, I've seen too much. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Twas grace that brought me safe this far, and grace shall lead me up. No, I seen God move in my life in too many ways. From being broke as a joke. From having nothing in my refrigerator but a light bulb and fingerprints. To being able to eat whatever I want to eat, whenever I want to eat it. God brought me here. Oh, come on, y'all, trying to scrap and scrimp and rob Peter to pay Paul. But now I can pay everybody and got money in the bank. God brought me here. Somebody shout, God brought me here. I know where I come from. Somebody say, I know where I come from. Lord have mercy. So when you see us waving our hands, yeah, when you see us shouting, when you see us crying, we're not crazy. We just know where we come from. I remember I'm chicken feeding grits. 
Good Lord of mercy. My grandfather told me he ate chicken feet. And my grandfather said to me, listen, I'm going to show y'all something. I want to show y'all something. I'm glad he said that. My grandmother used to ask me which piece of chicken I wanted, Raven. And my grandfather, listen, listen, you got to get the story. My grandfather walked up one day while my grandmother was saying, what piece of chicken you want, baby? My grandfather said, what? You asking that boy what piece of chicken he want? My grandfather looked me in the eye with conviction and said, I ate chicken feet. And I was grateful. And I looked at him with conviction. And I said, you know, if you could have had a thigh leg, you would have been happier. <laughs> He laughed, shook his head, and said, yeah, you're right, and walked away. The moral of the story is, from chicken feet to choices. You, good God. In two generations, we went from chicken feet to choices. Oh my God! Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? From my grandfather to my mother to me. From having no choice to getting to choose. I'm going to say it like I feel it, pray Lord. I've been trying to work on my English and everything because I know we're going all over the world. But I'm going to say it like I feel it. That ain't nobody but God. Deacon Pitch, that ain't nobody but God. That's where it came from, Don. That's where it came from. So now he's about to tell them how they got here. In verse 8, he said, I brought you to the land of the Amorites right. who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you. He said, but I gave them into your hands. That's one of the reasons no weapon formed against you. Is able to prosper. That's one of the reasons why you no longer need to worry about your haters. You don't need to lose any rest or sleep over your enemies. Because God said they came against you, but I whooped them for you. <laughs> oh, Lord. Woo! God, I feel your anointing. There are some things that have come against the people of God. God is about to become your defense, your shield, your buckler. And God is about to defeat what has come after you. Hey! Somebody shout, Lord, fight for me. <laughs> he said, he said, they fought against you. Elder Smith, you seeing this? He said, but I gave them into your hands. You know why? Because they were getting between you. And what I promised you. And anything that comes between you and what I promise you is going to get dealt with. If they had, you, had just left you alone, they'd have been all right. But they had to try to stop you. So God said I had to deal with them. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, God. So when Balak, oh, no, no, wait a minute. I gave them into your hand. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. And then when Balak, the son of Zippor, 
the king of Moab prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to put a curse on you. Since physical warfare wouldn't work, the enemy thought he would try spiritual warfare. So they tried to hire the prophet to come and put a curse on him. But he said, I can't curse. But God is blessed. He said, but I would not listen to Balaam. So he blessed you again and again. And I delivered you out of his hand. That's for everybody who got any concerns in your heart about people who don't want to see you prosper. They can't stop you. McFadden and Whitehead said, ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. Can't stop us. Not when God's got a plan for us. Angie, how, how's, how's anybody going to get between you and what God wants you to have? Sister Moore, they can pray all they want, then it won't work. And it'll still work. People who've been trying to stop you will turn around and bless you. Am I right about that sound? They will turn around and be the one helping you get there. You can't stop God, Sister Lucille. So then he said, then you cross the Jordan. I wasn't supposed to talk about the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The sinners of Jericho fought against you, as did also. Look at the list of people, y'all. The Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, the, Hitt the Hittites, Gergeshites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. So even, <laughs> Sister Carolyn, when the enemies are numerous, God said, I took care of all of them. And I did it for you. I did it for you. I did it for you. Through this, God is saying, look at how devoted I have been to you. And all I'm asking you to do is be devoted to me. God said, I'm not asking you to do anything that I hadn't already done. Because I showed my devotion. Look at, look at our history together. How much of that did you, did you deserve? All I'm asking you to do is commit to me. Whew. He said, I sent the horn in the head of you, which drove them out before you. Also, the two Amorite kings, he said, you did not do it with your own sword and bow. And y'all know me. I underline you did not do it. <laughs> That's what I have. I left the sword and bow part out. It just found out you did not do it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I gave you a land on which you did not toil. Think about this, y'all. And cities you did not build. And you live in them. And you eat from their vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Here's what the Holy Spirit is saying. Don't have a sense of entitlement. Don't act like you God owes you what he's done for you. See, when things when things come easy Sometimes we don't appreciate them. That's right. That's right. Oh, God. 
I know, I know, I know it. I know it's appreciate, but appreciates what I felt in my spirit. You understand? Like I've heard some of us of my generation complain about the children of this generation, saying that because many of them have had it easy, they don't appreciate what it took for them to get here. But this is not a this generation issue only. Because some of us sometimes forget the ways that God has made. And we went from where we were to where we are so quickly until we forgot how good God has been. Because the thing about how God works is, is that it could not be and then be just like that. I was telling somebody a testimony about how my wife and I, we were so broke, we were so poor until we, we slept in a house with no air conditioning one summer and no heat one winter. And we had to hold each other close. We loved each other, but that wasn't the reason we were close. It was because it was cold in the house. And then my wife shopped at the $7 store where everything was $7. It was all we could afford. I did her perms. And then she went and got her hair cut. I, my head is bald today because I shaved it in order to save money. I remember putting my car out on the curb with the keys under the mat because the people kept threatening to repossess it. So I gave up and said, come get it. And I caught the bus to work. I walked all the way from my house to the mall, got on the bus at the mall, put me off downtown. And I was walking from downtown Broughton Street to President Street to go to my job. And I was going to call Elder Johnson to come pick me up at midnight when I got off work. That's, that was my plan. And we were broke, y'all. We, we, I didn't have the kind of money. We didn't have the money for me to go take her someplace nice like Macy's or Belk's or Dillard's where everybody else was going. Well, we went to Carrie Hilliard, Sister Moore. My wife and I would eat the club sandwich special with water, order some lemon, get some sugar, and make lemonade. While everybody else had captain's platters and had she crab soup as an appetizer, we ate our little club sandwich and french fries and went home happy. And sometimes we were so broke, we couldn't even do that. We just went home and stirred up some spaghetti. Y'all talk to me. But then one day, I get a bow shot. One day, I remember it like it was yesterday. My wife said she needed clothes to go to work in. And I remember we went to Macy's and we spent about three or four hundred dollars in one trip. And when we got home and she was looking through her thing, that thing hit me just a year ago. There was no way that we could have shopped at Macy's and dropped that kind of cheddar. But look at God and how far he'll bring you. One day you won't be able and the next day you will be able. It's, it's just like Sam. It happened just like that. And Angie, we didn't realize we had it until we had done it. How many people have that testimony in this room? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, God. Right now, it's the time for Thanksgiving. Come on, put some thanks up in the air. Come on, put some Thanksgiving in this environment. Come on, lift him up in this place. Oh, God. Oh, God. I, I, I didn't tell the story to put the focus on me. I told the story to, to show how one minute it can be one way. And the next minute it can be completely different. That's how good God is and what he does. And when you remember days like that. 
When you remember your days from back here, it helps you when you're up here. So that when somebody asks you for your testimony, all you're doing is talking about God. You're not talking about where you went to school, what kind of grades you made. You're talking about God. <laughs> Let me wrap this up. I've had enough of y'all time. So now to the commitment. He said, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Everybody say, with all faithfulness. With all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and Egypt and serve the Lord. He took him down that trip down memory lane first. So it will make sense to serve God. Amen. He said, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you. Then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. <laughs> Whether the gods, little g, your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. Amen. And he says this to the head of the household. Who are the leaders? in their families, and their community. We made it to family February, didn't we? These are the people who set the spiritual tone for their families. He called the people of influence. He called the people that he knew that their decision was going to impact the decisions of others. Then when they went home with a mind made up to serve God, then the wife was going to serve God. And the son was going to serve God. And the daughter was going to serve God. And their children was going to serve God. And their children was going to serve God. And their children were going to serve God. That their decision would impact generations. So he called them. He says on you to make the decision for your household who you're going to serve. Because he knew that what they decided and what they did would be respected and imitated by those that they led, especially the people in the house. So he's challenging them to go all in on God. Knowing the effect that it will have on every home and on the community as a whole. The only reason the community is without God is because there are so many homes without God. The reason a city is without God is because there are so many communities without God. If there are states without God, it is because there are cities without God. And if there's a nation without God, it's because there's so many states without God. But it begins in the home. And it begins with each individual decision to serve God in a committed way. What can I do about it? Live for God. At home, at work, in front of the wife and the husband and the children, and watch how that influence rubs off on them. Watch how they grow up knowing who God is. Pray together. Read scripture together. Spend time talking about God together. This is what he's calling them to. Because the nation cannot be one under God until the households are under God. This was simply a call to commitment 
to God and to the spiritual health and future of their families. Y'all, if we don't commit at a high level, we're going to lose generations. They didn't just end up where they were. It was because somebody neglected to serve God. Yeah. One person. It don't matter. I'm just one person. But that one person affected their children and their children after that. That's right. yeah. And now we got three or four generations who don't know God. Yeah. But this first Sunday of Black History Month, I say that's not our legacy. We got here as black people because of God. All of the rights we enjoy, being able to drink out of any fountain, being able to use any restroom, being able to hold jobs that we were never able to hold, Being able to shop wherever we want to shop, eat where we ever, wherever we want to eat. God. And what's going to take us further, church? We can't leave him. So on this first Sunday of Black History Month, first Sunday of Family February, I encourage you, as he encouraged them, serve the Lord with all faithfulness. Amen. Be devoted to him. Be committed to him. Yeah. Because he has been devoted and committed to us. Yeah. So old Joshua, Joshua said, I don't know what your plans are. I'm not trying to twist your arm. He said, but as for me and my house, he said, we will serve the Lord. As for me, Mrs. Leslie S. Taylor, we will serve the Lord. You can say it if you'd like. Go ahead and make your declaration. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're going to do around here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do around here. Oh, yeah, that's what we're going to do around here. I see what the culture's doing, but no, 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 no. We ain't doing that. No, I know the culture. They worshiping everything they move. No, 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 not here. Wrong address for that. We serve God up in here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Whoo we Thank you for how far you brought us. As a people, but also as individuals. We look back over our family lineage. What our grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents had to endure us to be able to be who we are today we say thank you because we realize that where we are is not always where we've been even in our own personal lives we've had journeys <laughs> we can all tell stories about how good you've been you're showing your devotion to us over and over again May we now show our devotion to you. Help us, Lord, to train our children up in the way that they should go so that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Help us to be examples of what it looks like to love God, serve God, for all to see, especially in our households. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody. Let's give God the glory.
Amen. Wow, God. So anyway, I, I really wasn't supposed to. But anyway, to God be the glory. I was supposed to. If you're watching today and you're not saved, maybe your family didn't introduce you to Christ. Maybe you didn't have a grandmother or a grandfather or an aunt or uncle who took you to church. Maybe you're sitting and you're looking at this message and you heard this message today and you're saying, I don't know the God you're talking about, but I want to. You can today. You see, what God done in the life of the people who celebrated in this room, he'll do in your life too. See, we were all born in sin. And David said that we were shaped in iniquity. The scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I, I quote those scriptures because I don't want you to think that where you are right now is exclusive to you. Every person who knows Jesus as their savior was once lost Amen. and needed to be saved. None of us were born perfect or lived perfect. So what God has done in our lives, he can do in yours as well. What we did was we invited Jesus to be our savior. And today you can do the same. Just pray the simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I repent of all my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, I, I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you did die on the cross for my sins and that you are Lord. I wholeheartedly believe that after you died, your father raised you from the dead and that you are alive today and forever. Lord, come into my life, into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Save me. I surrender to you today. In Jesus name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, whether you're in this room or you're watching by YouTube, I'm going to ask you to please go to our website at www.reallifeptwentworth.com. That's www.reallifeptwentworth.com. I'm going to ask you to go to the contact page. When you get to the contact page, you'll see the word salvation with an image beneath it. Click that image. Form will open up to you. I'm going to ask you to please fill that form out. And if you give us permission to, we will reach out to you and give you support in your new life in Christ. If you don't have a church home, you'd like to make this your church home on that very same page. There's a covenant partner image. Click that. Fill that form out. And one of our team members will reach out to you and let you know what you need to do to become a covenant partner of real life. I want to say to you, welcome to the body of Christ. God bless you, is our prayer. Come on, give God some glory today, y'all. Wow. Wow, what a beautiful first Sunday, amen? Amen. It's Black History Month. Um, I remember a time when uh, it was not the whole month. I remember when uh, it wasn't really celebrated and, uh, and, and they used to keep us home from school back, way back when. And now children of color have the beautiful, beautiful option to celebrate Black History Month, celebrate the birthday of Martin Luther King, to remember all those who paved the way for us to be the people that we are today. I wanna invite you to take some time this month and look into our history and see how great a people we are. See our accomplishments, how GPS came into being, 
all of the things that can be done with the peanut to see who we are in athletics, politics, education, and the arts. We are an amazing people. We are capable of amazing things. And I just pray that our people would realize that our history did not begin on boats. That we were ingenious, we, we had ingenuity and skill that would boggle the mind. Right. You see, what happens is the enemy will use our ignorance of where we came from as a tool to keep us from going where we can be. Let's educate ourselves, amen? Every year we take on the task of putting up videos and things like that. This year is going to be different. I'm going to ask you to take opportunities to do the research, learn things about who we are, where we came from, what we've done, because I believe that black history is still being made and it's being made with people who look like you and me in rooms like this. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. So everybody, I want you to remember tomorrow morning we have prayer at 6 a.m. Pastor Leslie led prayer throughout the whole month. So I guess Elder Johnson's back on the line tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Please remember to come and study the Bible with us on virtual Bible study this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Thank you all so much for joining us on Wednesday nights. The Wednesday night Bible study numbers are going up, and we are so grateful for that. Brothers, remember, third Sunday, suited up Sunday. Come in your suit, your tie, your shine shoes. Come looking good, brothers. Say amen. 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 We're representing celebrating black excellence this month let's come looking good guys and then after that we're going to have coffee and conversations just the time of fellowship after worship on february the 28th on the 18th excuse me and remember everybody this is focus on the family of february so please please focus on your family now we have jersey sunday next sunday next sunday can y'all believe super bowl next sunday yes sir Super Bowl is next Sunday. We have the Kansas City Chiefs City. versus the San Francisco 49ers. It's going to be an interesting game. I unfortunately do not have a dog in the fight. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons, they won't rise up. But I'm praying for them. Amen. The, prayer, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. That's all I'm going to say about the Falcons today. So join us. Uh, Sunday again for worship. We'll be here 9 45 a.m. in person, 10 a.m. online. Thank you, everybody who's here in person. Thank you, everybody who's watching online. To our online audience, God bless y'all. Thank y'all for being with us today. We love you. Have a wonderful week. To our in person congregation, stand to you.